it was really beginning to take a toll on me. Um, like, not just emotionally, but like I feel the physical effects, like breathing, walking, staying awake. I, they were all becoming kind of a challenge. So um, I actually begged my parents to get me into my the next hospital as soon as possible. And I mean, this wasn't to say that I was ready to get better, but I just knew that I needed something to help me. So my third inpatient stay, um, two months long, this is where I kind of started to make some progress. Um, I worked in groups and individual therapy, not as much as I should have, but I was at least open to the idea of recovery. Um, and I still had definitely negative thoughts. Um, things were not perfect at all. But when I left, I was at least open to the idea of recovery. Um, that being said, I was open to the idea of recovery. But like Becky said, I came back end of May and people were like, oh my gosh, you look so great. Oh my God, how does it feel to be healthy again? I mean, one friend even, I walked up to her door and um, I opened the door. It was the first time I saw her in like months. And she goes, wow, you gained so much weight. To which I should have responded, thanks, so did you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that was really traumatizing for me. Um, I also left my third hospitalization two pounds over my goal weight. And this is, of course, still in my range, but two pounds over the minimum goal weight. And for a long time, weight was a huge issue for me in the hospital for for a very long time, um, not just in the hospital, but also out. For a long, long time, I viewed my goal weight as the absolute maximum weight I would allow myself to be at. Like if I went like 0.5 over, I would freak out and scream at my doctors because they had put me on a weight gain meal plan. Um, true story, actually. I was um, for a while convinced that I had hypothyroidism, a thyroid disorder that makes you gain weight. And so I made my doctors run tests that cost hundreds of dollars just to convince me that I didn't. I don't. <laughs> so, um, so that was a huge issue. And so I, I left two pounds over my goal weight. And so I, I thought I had to undo this two pounds. And I started to restrict just, to, just really, I mean, honestly, to lose the two pounds. And uh, of course, things began to spiral out of control. And welcome fourth hospitalization. <laughs> so um, my last hospitalization was probably my, no my most necessary. Um, but also, when I went in, my most embarrassing, and I was embarrassed, yes, because I had failed a recovery, I was, but even more because I felt that I wasn't emaciated enough to be in a hospital, to tell you the truth. And um, thankfully, my doctor and my therapist pushed me really hard, and um, you know, I began to work on a lot of the underlying issues and a lot of the future issues, and when I came out, things weren't perfect, but... Thankfully, that was my last hospitalization. Um, however, the next, I guess, year of my life was possibly, and these girls know it, I mean, even harder than the first. Um, two ideas that really sum up my recovery process are fake it till you make it and two steps forward, one step back, which Becky shared with you. Um, but fake it till you make it basically means that the actions are going to come before the thinking, and the thinking will follow. And in my case, that was 100% correct. I mean... For so long after I left the hospital, um, I was mentally just a wreck. Um, I wouldn't, I didn't like to socialize. I was afraid that somebody would make a comment, so I just didn't go out. Um, if you know me, this is quite strange, but I avoided shopping, and I love shopping, but um, I avoided it because I was afraid that, you know, you walk into those little boutiques and somebody will go, oh, you look like a blank size, and I was terrified of that. Um, any comments like that, people would say, and I would mutter, like, thanks, walk away, and the rest of my week would be totally ruined. So I was just um, completely withdrawn, isolated, and I began to slip a little, but fortunately, my parents caught it early, and they gave me a choice. Um, they said, you can go to residential, or you can do a semi-Modsley approach. And for those of you who don't know what Modsley is, it's where your parents kind of become the hospital. Um, they, I mean, there are different versions of it. We did like a semi version, but they basically ate all my meals with me. And actually, um, my one friend, my best, one of my best friends had to supervise me at lunch and report back to my parents. And at this point I was 15. I mean, that was kind of embarrassing. But um, I ended up choosing Maudsley and it was horrifying to me, but I knew that I needed to, you know, give life a shot. I had already been in the hospital four times 
it was something where, like, I actually was at that point missing the hospital a lot. Like, I would have dreams that I was in the hospital and wake up and be crying because I wasn't there, because it wasn't a reality, like, actually. And um, so I, I knew that I needed, as much as I wanted to go to another program, I knew that I needed to be at home and give this a shot. So we did this semi mosley approach for about four months, and my parents finally let me take back control of my food intake. And that was one of the toughest decisions ever because I was so tempted to go back to old habits and just go back to the hospital. But I already had a lot of good things going for me. Um, I had met these girls who really reminded me of, you know, who I was, who I wanted to be again, and, like, the fun, happy girl that I, I really am, like, I hope. And, you know, I had formed other friends in school. I was in a school play. Like, I had just had a lot of things going for me. Also, as Becky mentioned, um, she didn't mention the me part, but I went with her to Ghana, um, and she, we mentioned, Becky mentioned this to me when I wasn't doing so well, when I was still doing the Maudsley approach, and my parents were like, are you kidding? My parents and doctors were like, are you kidding? Like, Christina, a third world country, really? Like, after all this? No, 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 no. But, um, but I, I was persistent, like Becky, and I said, I'm going, I'm going, and they basically said, you know, if you maintain your weight, um, up until the program, and we had agreements with the program. I was weighed actually two days before I went. I left for Ghana, and if I was not at my goal weight, I was not going. But I ended up being able to go, and the experience was absolutely life changing. We worked in an orphanage for three weeks. Um, we're exposed to Ghana, the country, and it was just amazing. Um, really, really great. So that was kind of a bigger goal that kept me going. Um, and after that, things just kept slowly getting better. It was two steps forward, one step back, but um, life really began to take over the eating disorder. I had too many things going for me already. So I guess, I mean, to tell you where I am today, I mean, I'm happier than I've ever been. I finally, finally feel like a normal teenage girl, and I just, I love it. Um, I just got my driver's license. I finally have my first date, and um, I'm applying to colleges. I even worked at um, Columbia's Eating Disorder Research Program this summer, um, so that was a great experience. And um, I guess I would just tell anybody who's struggling right now, um, for so long for me, it seemed impossible, I mean, absolutely impossible to become that girl that you know eats whatever she wants and embraces her body, but let me tell you, it's possible. I mean, it's possible to go out to the diner at 2 a.m. with your friends and have pancakes and not care about, you know, calories or fat grams or any of that crap because you're actually living in and enjoying the moment. It's possible to strut around in a cute little outfit and actually smile when someone compliments you because you really believe it. It is possible, and I think I'm living proof. Um, I'm a real person now. I have hopes and dreams. I have real relationships. I go out and socialize. I care about you know, important things instead of how many calories I eat for lunch or how much I weigh. People don't pity me anymore. They want to be like me. They want to be friends with me. Um, people tell me I look amazing all the time now, and I can actually smile, which I couldn't for so long because now I actually believe them. The negative thoughts have almost completely subsided. And, I mean, on the rare occasions they do come around, I don't even entertain them for a second. As Zeki said um, a few months ago, I've come way too far to take orders from a cookie. <laughs> so, as a dear friend of mine once told me when I was in the hospital, um, and hopefully this will help somebody out there, um, she said to me, you have a choice. Miserable, sick little girl who misses out on everything, or real girl who lives. Try it.